But no one's getting it more right than the Collingwood Footy Club. Eleven on the on the on the bounce would suggest that they're getting it right at the right time. The more and more I see of the pies, the more and more I think that they are in contention to win it this year. Collingwood win by four. Collingwood crowd about to go crazy. It's been a winter classic at the MCG. Collingwood win. They're inside the top eight. They overcome the bravest of Gold Coast Suns in a win that might yet define their season. Another Collingwood thriller. If you only watch one team this year, make it Collingwood on eighth consecutive win, and there could be more glory ahead. There's the siren. Arms in the air. That has gone through. Jamie Elliott has won the game of footy for this famous club. Collingwood again. <laughs> again in a close one, the Pies get it done. It is just developing into the one of the great footy stories. We're sitting here watching that, the three of us, <laughs> and we are just laughing. It's you just great. can't imagine, or you cannot... If you're writing a movie script, you'd say, look, you can do a couple of close ones, you know, let's do maybe yeah. six. <laughs> oh, no, let's do 11. And they go, no, 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 no come on. No, and then we're watching it unfold in front of our eyes. So, for the next few minutes, let's try and unravel what most people are doing around yeah. the country, saying, how does this happen? Well, how does a team go from 17 and climb their way into the top two and have as much self-belief as anyone? You, you do the blink test, I think, on Collingwood. You know, mm. call, it, call it a month ago or whatever, and, and you get caught up in the emotion and the close games and all of that. And well, you, you, you didn't. Think, July 4th, you said they could win. Well, and that's, that's on the back of digging a little bit deeper and not just getting caught up in the fact that they were winning games, but the way they were actually getting it done. And to come from 7th, I think that's why we're all so mm. captivated and scratching mm. our head. I mean, is it too simplistic to say that they just had a, a down year last year? Oh, I think there's got to be more. There's got to be more mm. layers to it than that. And, and, and we'll try and unpack as we go along. But, I mean, there are some different changes in the way they play and then a new coach comes in and sweeps in and, hey, maybe we're seeing the emergence of one of the great coaches now. They're way too early. But right now, Craig McRae's riding I, this wave. I think, uh, I think they've got to believe the last two weeks especially. I think coming out of that North Melbourne game, there was another game around that. I didn't think they, they were going that well. You know, North Melbourne, who they, they were really struggling, should have beaten them. But I think the last couple of weeks, their opponents and the way they've developed that belief, and then that kick after the siren uh, by Jamie Elliott. And then to come out and beat Melbourne when I thought, oh no, Melbourne's fixed things up against Fremantle. Now you're starting to sort of almost push the percentage aside. Because it's hard to look at the ladder. You go, hang on a minute, there's a misprint on the ladder. There's, yeah. They're only 106% when Richmond's outside the top eight and they're 114%. But it's more than that. Their game's starting to round off nicely. Melbourne fixing things up against Fremantle. They fixed things up against Collingwood in the first half. Mm, yeah. They I had did. them right yeah. where they wanted. 41 inside 50 for the Melbourne. the sixth time this year well, they've looked, come from behind yeah. at three-quarter time. Yeah, it, took, it took them three years to do that. The la in the last three years, six times they've come mm. from behind at three-quarter time. They've done it this year. It looked like a 10-goal result at half-time. But if you just if you didn't look at the scoreboard and you just looked at the, the, the numbers, you know, the, the, the metrics that we look at to dictate who's going to win a game of footy. But I think for Collingwood, like, it's become a little bit self-fulfilling now yeah. in, in that mm. the belief has grown and grown. They get to close situations again. They've been there before. But the fact that the, the, game, is, the game is so well-rounded, I think, for them at the moment that regardless of what situation they find themselves in, the game's always going to be competitive and it's built on the back of their defensive work. So, again, so we'll talk about intangibles and spirit and belief, which I think are every bit as important as what we're seeing here. But this is game style here, right? This is, this is a distinctive pattern in the way they played their footy and everyone's picked up on it. You know, towards the end of the Bucks, Buckley te tenure, he, they were a bit stodgy and a bit slow and a bit sideways moving. With the footy, yeah. I think they've been open about it, the Collingwood hierarchy and the coaching staff been open that there is some Richmond influence there. Yeah. So we look at the 2017 Richmond, we've done the comparisons. Remarkably, 
uh, close to yeah. that game style. So there's no doubt to free things out from an offensive point of view, Gaz. Yep. But I think defensively, uh, the whole team system is starting to come together nice, nicely. Personnel, they've always been very strong. The addition of Murphy there the last 10 or 11 weeks has been good. But their ability to defend behind the ball, yeah. but also put an enormous amount of pressure in around the football has been great. And that's that intangible spirit you so, speak about. So, so game style is part of it. And, and yeah. I think a lot of the, the, the freeing up of game style, it, it's not just the way you play, but it, f- it frees up your mind as well. Mm. But this is the other part, is, is mm. the actual personnel change. And mm. what they've been able to, to do, we know there was the, the publicised fallout with the, the salary mm. cap stuff and the players they lost, but they've just gotten tremendous value from the players of, they've actually gone out and recruited over the last few years. So, so all coaches are sa- salesmen, essentially, aren't they? So they've got to stand up in front of a group and sell something to them, and then you, what will determine whether or not you're any good is if, it, if what you're selling is right, and then if the other, if who you're selling to are buying. And, and that's what I see with this group. They, they just have bought whatever Craig McRae has put down on the table. That is, that's a great skill as a coach in a short period of time to say, hey, irrespective of where we are you know, yep. in a game, we will keep attacking. I'm selling attacking to you, and they've bought it. They yeah. bought it from day one, and they bought it in the face of 22 points against Melbourne, 23 points against Melbourne in uh, Queen's birthday. All of those. Co- keep attacking against Eston when the game's done. I sell attack. And you've bought it. Well, the other thing is, too, they've got a strong... Uh, one part of the team that's always been strong, really, is their defence. So I reckon he sold that on the back. Hey, we've got a gun defence. Yeah. Uh, like I said, the addition of Murphy has certainly helped them, but they've had more, Howe, Maynard, to start, just to name a few. So I reckon fly beyond the scenes would be saying, hey, boys, attack. If we do turn the ball over, it's OK. We've got a great system behind the ball and our pressure at the source yeah. is magnificent. It's OK. Watch how selfless they just went yeah. then. Yeah. They just left and went, well, left it, and went. It, it, it's... It needs to be habitual because if you have time to stop and think, should I go, mm. should I not, the moment's passed you by. So they didn't get there on any of those plays where they were coming forward, but what they did was they bought time for the roll-around plays. So you saw Dacos yep. at the end. They're the ones coming from off-ball to actually provide the support. Then the change kicks in. That's right. So they called they kicked 25 points from the back half against Melbourne, yeah. which, which is, you know, they're, they're um, most scores from back half. So all that, what you just see then is they get the numbers back and yep. support. They go manic pressure, which the pressure, that's part of this intangible. Love it. And then they've got numbers to share and then the willingness to, oh, yeah, we yep. attack now. Then they you don't go shot. sideways. Then you they don't go slow, shot. we go. They score 25 uh, have points. We, have we go. underrated their fitness as well? Like, yeah, they look like a rock-hard team and yep. they don't have many injuries. In fairness, just to talk to Bucks on Friday night sitting on the couch with him and he's running through a few of the elite runners when it comes to... Uh, their endurance time trials yeah. and all that. So I think we've probably underrated that they compared to, to say Melbourne. Way, yeah. And you just got to give great effort. The, the, yeah. I love your buying and selling. I, I think when you when you've got players that have come in from unheralded backgrounds. Now clearly Dacos comes in as a yeah. you know, as a high draft pick and he's a star. But when you guy when you get guys that come in that are desperate, yeah. that haven't been a guaranteed walk up start the whole way through from junior football, well then you get then you get players more inclined mm. to buy what you're selling as a coach. And I reckon one one player is Ash Johnson yeah. that's come in and just looks at the level straight away. So how can you put a price on this? So this is the journey, right? He, he's playing from under 18s for two years, 14, 15. Then he's not playing any you know, real elite level until Sample for two years. And then he's at Collingwood, right? And this is what I loved about this. In the five games prior to him debuting, he kicked three goals. Mm. So he's playing VFL footy, they're watching him, he kicks three goals. That, that's not the, the form line that says, now I'm going to elevate you. But they know the kid. You know, this is another coaching art. Look at him and go, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. OK, three goals in five. Yeah. I'm going to play him the seniors. What? Don't, I think he's a senior player. I think look, he's an AFL player. Yeah. He's not a VFL player. Don't show me what they can't do. Show me what they can. And How I reckon Ash Johnson look, looks like that sort of guy. I mean, he's a, he's a ripping-looking athlete, isn't he? Oh, he beautiful, like he's yeah. He's very rangy, yeah. isn't he? I think the standards actually helped him. because the, the And the ball movement, don't, don't, don't underrate that ball movement as well. What, what it does for the psyche is uh, forwards. You know, I think it's helped Elliot. Yeah. And I think it's helped Ginneman just from a leading forward. Those boys get on the move more, but he looked fantastic and composed under pressure. We loved all of that. And yeah. then you got the Dagoe whole you know, yeah. debate, Dagoe to stay, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But 
the buy-in. He looks. We look like he's got yeah. buy-in. He looks as invested as he's ever been. We know what an offensive talent he is. Ball in hand, he charges for it, all of that sort of stuff. But the defensive work is what stood out for me on Friday night against the D. So here's centre bounce. He's in. He's the first one back. So he's the first one back defensively to impact, to apply pressure. It was his highest rated pressure yeah, game of the year. Yep. Uh, again, here he's in. He's on Oliver. So it's centre square bounce. We think of Dugowie. We think Dustin Martin roll. Yep. Charge forward, get yep. on the end of it forward again. He's the first one back. He's the one that almost runs a bit of a wing pattern and he's there Great defensively vision. to impact. So That's you're right. looking for attitude and you're looking for effort mm. from the Jordan Degoe. We know we get it one way with the footy. He's showing it the other way as well. Fantastic. I think that, and these are the parts of the unravelling of Collingwood where you go, hey, how come they're doing this? Well, mm. that is another big part of it. All this is great. So they got themselves into second position and it's it's a journey that we have all loved and admired. At the same time, there's a side that also haven't lost for 11 weeks and are sitting on top of the ladder and they just might be a side this year that might